Hello guys, hope you are good and enjoying your daily routine lives. Uh, uh, this is uh, this lecture is important for those students or for those learners who uh, never uh, attended a programming language course and who are the beginners uh, in any programming language course. And this video is also good for those uh, learners who want to make their concept about algorithm pseudocode and flowchart so uh, uh, this uh, lecture can keep can be useful for experienced people as well okay guys uh, uh, before this lecture i would uh, suggest you that you need to attend my lecture which i have given that how to solve generic problem then i discuss about the type of problem so i will just uh, give you a recap that any problem can be uh, solved by following uh, six generic steps in which we have discussed that how you can identify a problem then how you can uh, get the knowledge base of the problem means you can define the problem then you can uh, uh, select uh, the different options that how you can solve that problem I mean you can uh, just talk about the alternatives and then you can uh, just uh, choose the best options from the given alternatives and then you can provide instructions for the you know, for the chosen uh, like solution and then you need to evaluate your solution that whether it was it was good or bad and how was your experience and then i discussed in that lecture that what are basically two types of problem we are dealing with one is called the algorithmic problem and the other one called the uh, heuristic problem so algorithmic problem was very simple that state forward and what is algorithm how we can define a very simple definition for algorithm is that number of uh, steps to solve a specific uh, problem and uh, uh, the uh, the heuristic uh, problems are actually a type of problems which are not state forward or which are not simple for example if you go to market and if you want to buy uh, your cell phone so this is actually the heuristic problem if you want to know the detail of heuristic problem as well as the algorithmic problem so please don't forget to attend my uh, uh, by my the lecture on the topic uh, the problems and their uh, problems and their types okay so this lecture in this lecture i will just talk about uh, algorithms uh, flowchart and uh, pseudocode uh, so guys uh, because you want to uh, go in the field of uh, uh, programming uh, you are you want to code a programming problem so before that what we do we divide actually a, a typical programming task into two phases one phase is called program problem solving phase and the other phase is called implementation phase so guys in this phase you need to know that actually how you can create a sequence of steps to provide the solution and then those sequence of steps is called algorithm it means that for any programming task you can divide that task into two part in part one you you just write the steps that how you will resolve this problem and in the second step that is called the implement implementation phase you can code your program in by using some programming language it could be python it could be java it could be c sharp there are there are thousands of languages so as per your own expertise or as per your own interest you can use that programming language to code your algorithm so uh, uh, guys uh, normally uh, uh, pseudo code is actually very uh, general alg algorithm so for example if you want to use a very generic solution for a programming problem so then then you can use a pseudo code so uh, pseudocode is an artificial and informal language that helps programmers uh, develop algorithms 
pseudo code is very similar to everyday English. So in everyday English we use statements. So in pseudo code you can break the problem into simplest into simple steps by using the English like statements. While algorithms are also simple, but here most of the time we use variables, we use some reservoirs of that the language in which we want to transform our algorithm. Okay, now guys, what we do, we will take a very simple example and then we will see that how we can convert this simple programming task into pseudocode and then how we can transform pseudocode into algorithm and then from algorithm to our flowchart. So I just uh, read this statement or problem for you. Write an algorithm to determine a student's final grade and indicate whether student is passing or failing. The final grade is calculated as the average of four marks. So uh, the problem is that, for example, a student uh, has four subjects and in those four subjects, the student has some marks and now we need to decide that whether student is failing or passing. So in this case, where we are assuming that if student's total grade or average grade is less than 50, so the student is fail. And if student ha having more than 50 uh, percent, so the student will pass. So this is the criteria. Okay, now what we are doing that we are writing simple statements in pseudocode input a set of four marks means that we are asking that okay give us the uh, number of uh, student in four subjects and then we will calculate their average by summing and dividing by four so you know the simple formula of average that you just calculate uh, the sum of uh, the four subject marks and then you will divide it by number of subject and then we will compare that if average if average of marks is below 50, then student will fail, otherwise student will pass. So this is the simple statements and what we have done, we have converted this problem into simple. So please remember this, that this is a programming problem. So we have converted this into simple steps of pseudocode. Now, the same we will transform into uh, algorithm and you can just see that algorithm is a refined form of your pseudocode, you can say. So here we have converted statements into, into specific variables. For example, we are saying that input and we have converted into variables and the variable is just a container of uh, values throughout a program. So here what we are doing that we are assigning uh, the marks to M1 M2, M3, and M4. So four subjects are being uh, represented by M1, M2, M3, and M4. And then what we are doing, we are adding all those marks divided by number of uh, subjects. And then we will get the average marks. And average marks will be saved in grade. And we are saying that if grade marks, means average marks are less than 50, then display that student is failed. Otherwise, display student is pass. So ending. So now you can just compare that if you compare uh, like uh, with pseudocode. So pseudocode is little simple as compared to algorithm. Okay. Now we jump to uh, flowchart, guys. You know that visuals for human beings, uh, visuals they are easy to understand as compared to the textual stuff. So, uh, uh, as a dictionary says, a flow chart is a schematic representation of a sequence of operations as in a manufacturing process or computer program. And the technical definition of a flow chart is a graphical representation of the sequence of operations in an information system or program Information system flowcharts show how data flows from source documents through the computer to final distribution to users. Program flowcharts show the sequence of instructions 
in a single program or subroutine. Subroutine is also called function. Different symbols are used to draw each type of flowchart. Now guys, I will show you. Uh, so this is actually uh, the breakdown of or list down the, uh, the, the function of flowchart shows logic of an algorithm, emphasizes individual steps and their interconnections. For example, control flow from one action to the next. Okay, guys, now you can see that this is the generic symbology or symbols which we can use in flowchart. So now I will just explain one by one. So this is actually a, a oval circle. So this is uh, this shape name is oval and why why we use it? It denotes the beginning or end of the program. So it means that whenever you start a flow chart or you stop a flow chart, so you will use this symbol at the start and at the end of your flow chart. Okay. Now the second one is parallelogram. So parallelogram is actually denotes an input operation okay so whenever you want an input operation input operation means that if you want to uh, if you want uh, like values from keyboard or if you ask values from uh, client or user so that is called input while rectangle denotes a process to be carried out for example addition subtraction division uh, there are many so whenever there is a process involved or action involved so you have to use the rectangle symbol okay this is called diamond denotes a decision or branch to be made the program should continue along one or two routes uh, so guys uh, this diamond symbol we normally use when we need to take a decision for example in our previous case uh, where we want where we want to know that if average grade is less than 50 or average grade is big than 50 bigger than 50 so this is actually a decision so in that scenarios we have to use actually this standard symbology this is called hybrid it denotes an output operation so for example if you want to send something to a printer or if you want to uh, to, uh, to send something on monitor so then you need to use this symbology in your flow chart while this line actually show the flow of data from one symbology to the other symbology okay now if you see that already we have uh, given this algorithm in our previous slide and now what we are doing we are going to transform this algorithm in the flowchart so now you can see that as i told you that whenever you are going to start uh, write a flowchart so you need to use the oval symbology to start your flowchart and then this is telling the flow and now you have used parallelogram which is actually used when you want to show the input of values so here we know that that we are asking the uh, the values of variable m1 m2 m3 and m4 from the user or from the keyboard so that's why we have indicated it as a input in parallelogram and now th this flow is showing that after this then we have to apply the formula to calculate the average so this is the action or this is the operation so for any operation we are going to use the rectangle uh, symbol as i explained in earlier or in the previous slide okay then it is showing the flow and this is the diamond symbol which we have used because here we have to take a decision that if average is less than 50 yes then we need to display fail that student is fail on the computer screen or to the printer and if if we say no then we need to uh, print pass and then we have to stop this flowchart so guys just see that it is very simple flowchart okay now, uh, uh, guys, I will explain that this diamond symbology is used when we have two conditions. But what about if we have more than two conditions? So it means that we can use more than one diamond symbol. We can use more than one diamond symbol, keeping in view the scenario of our programming problem.
okay so uh, this as this is also showing that for example uh, this is a statement in any programming language and how we can show this statement through the flowchart uh, guys relational operators they are very common in almost all languages so these uh, so you can just see that greater than less than equal greater than or equal to less than or equal to or not equal to so most more or less we are using these similar relational operators in all programming languages okay guys now we will see another example so for example in this uh, here we can write an algorithm that is two values determines the largest value and prints the largest value with an identifying message okay so now guys uh, we are writing algorithm for this problem so uh, so here in step one we will read value one and value two or we will take or we will ask from the user give give us value one and value two then in step two we will compare the value and if sorry uh, if the value one is greater than so max so so guys uh, this is there is a space i'm sorry for that there is a space so max is a variable so if value one is greater then value one needs to be saved in max variable okay if not then value two must be saved in max variable and in step three we will display the largest value whatever the value in max it is the largest so this is the algorithm now we will convert or transform this algorithm into flow chart that is very simple so now you can see that as I told you that all flowcharts we need to start we need to use uh, with starting oval shape and we need to stop with oval shape okay now because we are going to take uh, two values through input so we have used parallelogram and then uh, we are now here taking a decision that if value one is greater than value two for example uh, for example if value one is uh, four and value 2 is 5 so in this case uh, what will happen uh, value 1 is 4 and value 1 is 5 so if i compare value 1 with value 2 so value 1 is not greater than value 2 so my control will come here and now value 2 will be saved in max okay and now if you see that this lag will be executed and now after this the control of program will come here and the value 5 will be printed and the program will be stopped okay now we will just swap so now value 1 is 5 and value 2 is 4 so now when when the program comes here or control comes here so is value 1 value 2 is value 1 is greater than value 2 so value 1 is now 5 while value 2 is 4 now this condition is true yes value 1 5 is greater than 4 now that this lag will be executed and now value 1 means 5 will be saved in max and the answer will be printed that is 5 and stop so now you can see that how these two lags they will be executed okay so guys, uh, now we have covered that how we can actually uh, convert any given problem, programming problem into algorithm, and then how we can use flowchart. So these two steps are before coding. After making these two stuff or these two tech, applying these two techniques, you can now easily transform your flowchart or your algorithm into coding. Okay, so guys, to continue this, I have some class activities for you. In this class activity, I have given you some tasks. So for your self-learning, what you need to do, that you need to uh, take on this task and convert or write pseudocode for this task. Then you can write algorithm. And after that, you can draw flow chart of this task. And what is the task? Convert the length in feet to inches means what you need to do that you need to convert length which is given in feet into inches okay i explain again that the length which is given in feet you need to convert into inches and and guys you know it 
that how many inches are there in one feet? Good, 12 inches. Okay. So, one feet is equal to 12 inches. Okay. Now, what is task 2? In task 2, you have to write an algorithm and draw a flow chart that will calculate the roots of quadratic equation. And this is the quadratic equation I have given. And these are the root means x1 and x2. So, and... Uh, so, and, and, and it's got the complete quadratic equation. So, what you need to do, you need, you can Google the quadratic equation, just understand it, and then try to write algorithm and flow chart for quadratic equation. Okay, guys. So, guys, this is the task three. Write pseudocodes, algorithms, and draw flow charts for the following problems. What are those? A. Ask a number from the user. It means that you need to use input and tell the user that the given number is odd or even. Uh, so, so you have to tell the user that the number, for example, if user say a uh, three, so you know three is odd, and uh, if user say four, so four is even. So you have to uh, write pseudo code algorithm in flowchart. Then question number two here. Display product of an input number from 1 to 10. It means product means here multiplication. So here you need to ask, you need to ask two numbers, any number from 1 to 10 and you need to just multiply it and display it. Okay. Then task, subtask of 3, give greetings to the students depending on their grades. For example, student who graduated with excellent grade Greeting should be like congrats or congratulations student name means student name your grade is excellent. So these are the uh, three sub tasks of task three. So you have to write pseudo code algorithm flow chart for your own practice. Guys I have provided some solutions here but I would recommend you that please don't see these solutions. First you need to uh, write solution by your own after completing those solutions then you need to uh, then you need to compare your solution with the provided solution and i would recommend you that please don't see the solution first otherwise you may not learn the techniques that how to apply flow charting pseudo coding and algorithmic technique while solving your programming problems and these all techniques are applied before coding your programming problems. Okay. So here I have provided the code for uh, like feet into inches. And then I have also provided the flow chart for that. Uh, like activity 2, I have provided, uh, I think this uh, activity 2 is not given, but I have the solution if you want to calculate the area this and that maybe you can compare but i think this activity is not given over there so but still uh, uh, something similar product activity is given maybe you can just see that how it is solved and this activity is given for quadratic equation because quadratic equation a little bit difficult so maybe you can have some issues so that's why i have provided the solution for this quadratic equation so here you can see that i have provided the algorithm as well as the flow chart for quadratic equation. Uh, guys, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture and I would uh, suggest you that please go through all this stuff again and again, apply all these techniques on the given task or maybe you can think of tasks by yourself and apply these techniques. And after applying or attending this lecture, I am very hopeful. Now you can easily code or create the logic before coding into your programming language. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.